In this video, we're looking at how we can get a user's slicer selections as a list, and then we can use that list inside our formulas. There's lots of great new techniques in here, but we will be using a Lambda function. So that means you will need Excel 365 to work along with this video. Well, if you're ready, let's get started. Here in Excel, you can see the data that we're using for this example. We have a table, which is called data. It contains a date, item, and value column. And if we want to add a slicer, all we need to do is to select a cell inside our table, click insert, and then select slicer. That will open up the insert slicers dialog box. And from there, we can select which field we want to create a slicer for. For this example, we're going to use the date column and then we can click OK. We now have that slicer so we can easily cut and paste it onto another worksheet. Now that we have our slicer, let's write the formula to extract the values which a user has selected from that slicer. So how do slicers work? Well, when we select various buttons, for example, I've selected the 31st of January and the 31st of March, we can see that the data in our source table has been filtered to include those items. So therefore we need to use a formula which works for items which have been filtered. We've got two formulas for this. We've got the subtotal function or the aggregate function. For this example, we will be using subtotal. So we'll start with equals subtotal, open bracket. Now what kind of function do we want to perform? Well, we want to return a value of true if something is visible or false if it's not visible. Therefore, if we use the count A option, for each row, that means our table will return one if our item is visible or zero if it's not visible. And one is equal to true and zero is equal to false. So that's ideal for our requirements. Now, we're going to work through our table row by row. So we're going to include a parameter of R within there. So that's our subtotal. The next element we need is an if function. So we're going to say if. So if our subtotal result is true, in that scenario, we want to return whatever the value is in that row. If it doesn't equal true, that means that row is hidden and we want to return an empty text string. Now at the moment, this function won't work. We need to force it to work on a row by row basis. For this, we're going to use a by row and lambda combination. We'll start with lambda, and lambda will have a parameter which we will call r. We'll close that bracket at the end, but we also need to use a by row. So by row, open bracket, and the range that we want to use is from our data table, and we want to use the date column. So I'll close a bracket on our by row function and press return. You can see we now have all of the dates and those are the dates from our data table. What happens if we click the buttons in the slicer? So I'll select January and March. You can see that has filtered our table, but also affects the results that are returned by our formula. So all we need to do is to get the unique values and to filter out the blanks, and then we have the list of the items that have been selected. So I'll wrap this in a unique. I'll close that bracket. Now we would need to perform this calculation twice. So let's create a variable using the let function. So let open bracket, we will call this list. And then we can create a new line and we want to filter the list where the list does not equal an empty text string. So that removes any empty text strings for the items that we haven't selected. Now, this is a critical point. If you have an empty text string in your data table, then you may need to change this for another set of characters that don't appear within your table. So we'll close that filter and then I'll close the let function and press return. Fantastic, we now have the list of items which have been selected inside our slicer. With a standard pivot table, a user can select a button on a slicer and that is passed into the pivot cache to then return the relevant results. So a user only gets 
the values that they have selected. Now, in Power Pivot and Power BI, we can adjust that filter context and return other values. We can create a similar kind of functionality here using these formulas. Let's suggest that I select the 31st of March, and then we use the filter function equals filter, open bracket, and we want to return everything from the data table. And we want to return the values where the items from the date column are less than or equal to the maximum. So the max, and we want it for our cell E6 hash. So E6 is the cell that contains our selections. Let's press return there. And you can see that even though we've selected the 31st of March, we get the values for January, February, and March. Now, if a user were to also select the 31st of January, that wouldn't be a problem because our maximum value is still the 31st of March. So using this formula approach, we can create a type of filter context and the ability to adjust filter context using formulas. If we have multiple slices connected to a single table, those two slices impact each other. For example, if I select the 31st of January and the 31st of March and then alpha, you can see that we only have those two rows that are visible, which might not be what we want in terms of collecting user interactivity. Instead, what we might decide to do is to create a disconnected table. This table only contains dates. It's purely for the purpose of collecting the user slicer selections. This table is called disconnected table. And now if we create a slicer from that, we can use exactly the same formula as before, but this time we're going to use the disconnected table. Press return on that formula and that gives us exactly the same functionality. So if we select items here, it then allows us to select the items, but from our disconnected table. So therefore it means that we can have multiple slices and those slices are all connected to individual disconnected tables. Now our filter function doesn't change. It still references the same spill range for the selected items. So this is all about how we work with tables and the fact that we can use disconnected tables so that we can get any slice of selection value that we want. If you're thinking there's no way that you remember this formula combination because it's just too complex, then why don't we create a reusable function that we can just copy and paste from workbook to workbook. So to do that, we start with the lambda function. Open bracket. We only need one variable and that is the column name that we want to use. So we call table column. And then when we reference our disconnected table, we'll replace that with table column. And then we'll close our final bracket. I'm going to copy that, control C and press escape. Then from the formulas ribbon, I'll go to define name. We're going to give our formula a name of FX slicer selection. And then in the refers to box, we will paste in our Lambda function and I'll click OK. So now all we need to do is to type equals FX. We can see slicer selection appears, press tab, open bracket. You can see it says table column and we want to use the disconnected table and then the date column. Close that bracket, press return and that returns our slicer selections. If we select different items, yes, our FX slicer selection function is working as we would expect. Now, what about our filter function? Well, it's currently referencing cell E6 hash, which is our spill range for our function. But we can just insert this function directly in, which means we don't have to reference a spill range. So FX, slicer selection and again we want to connect to the disconnected table and the date column close that bracket press return and now our filter function isn't even using the spill range that we created earlier so we don't even need that interim step we can use fx slicer selection directly into our filter function so if we want to use fx slicer selection in a different workbook 
we simply copy this cell and paste it into another workbook and that formula will move so we can use it on any workbook that we like. And that's it, that's how we can collect the slicer selections from a user. In this video, we've seen four things. First of all, how do we get the list of items selected by a user? Secondly, how can we adjust that filter context inside a formula? Thirdly, we've seen how to work with a disconnected table, and also we've seen how to create a reusable Lambda function. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to find out more about our training courses, why not head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.